Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. We're going to look at the other uh, Flash video I did last night, which was about Gregor Smith. He is the Chief Medical Officer for Scotland. Uh, and we decided how he not only deleted his own WhatsApps on a daily basis, something that nobody does unless they've got something incredibly bad to hide, but he also instructed his staff to do the same. At that point, of course, it then becomes conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. That is an incredibly serious crime that carries up to a life sentence. I think Gregor Smith needs to be certainly stripped of his knighthood and then tried, prosecuted and thrown into jail. And I would suggest for life, when you consider how many lives were lost, it would seem only appropriate that someone like this also was in a jail cell, perhaps next to Nippy and a few of the others, certainly Freeman. Let's get them all in there because they're all complicit in one of the biggest acts, I think, possibly of genocide in this country's history. But we'll take a look at this to see why this man thinks he can get away, not only with breaking the law himself, but by ordering others to do the same. And there is no Nuremberg defence here. You cannot just say, I was only following orders. The law is clear. Here goes. So Scotland's chief medical officer, Sir Gregor Smith, told colleagues to delete WhatsApp messages daily. He knew that this was wrong. He knew there'd be an inquiry. He knew the evidence would be required. So why was he so adamant that this must be deleted? Why was he so scared of the truth coming out? How deeply involved was he in this conspiracy to potentially genocide the elderly in Scotland for political reasons. How dark are his hands and seeped in blood, as Shakespeare might say. Sir Gregor Smith was questioned by Casey Jamie Dawson at the UK COVID inquiry and claimed that he followed government guidance to regularly delete his informal messages. Government guidance was not to do that. No government guidance was to, in, you know, delete those messages. It may have been informal. Please, God, delete your messages said in hushed tones in the dirtier corners of Holyrood. But it certainly was not government guidance. He is joining Jason Leach, Nicola Sturgeon and John Swinney in doing so, in hiding the truth, in ensuring that evidence was completely destroyed, lest they all go to prison for mass murder. Scotland's Chief Medical Officer Sir Gregor Smith admitted that he deleted his WhatsApp messages regularly and advised his officials to do the same during the Covid pandemic. He becomes the latest high profile Scottish Government figure to confess to not keeping correspondence while the deadly virus was active. Arrest him, question him, prosecute him, jail him, throw away the key. Life. Life. People died and he is destroying evidence of what's happened. It's got to be life. We previously told how Nicola Sturgeon, Jason Leach and John Swinney all wiped their messages and they can all go for jail for life as well. It's perversion to... The thing is, they don't realise what laws they're breaking. But this is perversion of, perversion of justice. And this has got to be treated with all seriousness. New evidence has been presented that Mr Smith done similar as he protested that this was due to government guidance on informal messaging. This was not informal messaging. This is evidence. You can call it what you want, but it is evidence. He replaced Catherine Calderwood during the early days of the pandemic after she was caught visiting her second home, despite the lockdown rules. UK Government Inquiry uh, Lead Council Jamie Dawson KC presented messages from the weekly WhatsApp group where Mr Smith is joking with a colleague about freedom of information requests. Oh yes, how they laugh. How they laugh about freedom of information requests. How they treat the public with sheer and utter contempt. Graham Ellis asks him, I hope this isn't FOIable, to which the Chief Medical Officer re re responds, delete at the end of every day. So someone's inquired whether this should be a freedom of information thing, a serious legal question, and he has then said, delete that evidence every day. That is a crime. That, there's no question, that's a crime. It is, 
It is a joke, isn't it? These people are going to get away with this. This is going to be the biggest case, probably, of mass murder in since the Second World War. And these people are laughing and joking and they're going to walk away free because they've deleted and destroyed all the evidence that they have committed, possibly, genocide on the elderly on a massive industrial scale. The sort of thing that uh, the National Socialists in Germany in the 30s would have been proud of as they were locking them up in those camps. This is no different. Instead of camps, they had care homes. But the principle was the same. And they're laughing and they're joking about it. Oh yes, OK, just destroy the evidence. Because we'll never go to jail. Mr Smith was asked if it was his practice to delete messages at the end of every day and he replied the Scottish Government advice in relation to this was not to retain information for longer than was necessary. Yes, in case the truth ever came out. He added that he made sure that any information was pertinent to decisions was kept on the corporate record with his practice being made to make sure any information uh, was captured in an email form. He said my practice was that when information was no longer useful it should not be retained. All information should be retained and certainly... Um, if they go to WhatsApp, Meta will be able to provide all that information on the WhatsApps because all information is retained. Mr Dawson asked Mr Smith to expand on his definition of pertinent and whether this meant a decision, to which Chief Medical Officer said, once a consensus has been achieved, what the, that consensus was, he said, you know, he said then he would always delete messages frequently, if not every day, knowing that these things would come out, knowing they'd come back and send him to prison for his complicitness in what is going to hopefully amount to the prosecutions for mass murder. He then explained that there was advice given to Scottish Government employees which specifically dealt with informal messages and the need to delete messages on a regular basis. Why the need? Why the need to delete? Why? This is the question. Why are you telling people they must delete on a regular basis? It's their phones. There's no reason. It's not as though it's taking up space. No, there's no need to delete unless you are deeply shitting yourself over the content of those messages because you know that the content of those messages will be enough to convict you of some of the worst crimes in humanity. It's the only reason to do it. He said, there was also advice we were given in discussion with the then Director General reminding us that official business should not be done within these mediums and there should be regular deletion, partly for security purposes, bullshit, and it, well, yeah, the only security being your own personal security and not going to jail. He said that it shouldn't be seen as a secure medium. Well, it's not a secure medium. They retain everything. The top doctor then said that informal communications were usually used to arrange meetings and that any information thought to be pertinent would be captured in email form. Again, we can smell the bullshit from here. Mr Smith was also asked about the credibility of expertise of Scotland's clinical advisers. He, Mr Leach and Ms Calderwood were compared to England's Dr Chris Whitty and Patrick Vallance, who both have extensive careers in public health which they could rely on, whereas Leach was a dentist and Calderwood knew nothing. Mr Dawson added there had been a commentary about the fact that he was a GP, Mr Leach a dentist, Ms Calderwood an obstetrician, meaning there were not experts in public health or infectious diseases. No, there was not one epidemiologist amongst them. And yet they were made. And what, what does a dentist know about public health? What does a dentist know about disease control? Nothing. But he was the right man. He was sound. He was an obedient man who would do as he was told. People ill-suited and worse, unqualified, making decisions on a medical basis outside of their form of expertise. Do you know that that is explicitly illegal under the rules of medicine? Medical laws forbid people making decisions outside of their expertise. You don't go and get, say, let's pick, pick something. You don't get neurological advice from a chiropodist, do you? You don't ask a surgeon about mental health. They stick within their spheres of expertise. It's very, very important to have a dentist start talking about epidemiology is quite inappropriate. And ultimately, a dentist isn't even medical. They're all failed doctors. Let's face it, what do they do? 
yank out teeth. They're not even allowed to put you to sleep. They need to get in an anesthetologist, an ethnotologist, whatever it is, an ethicist. Come on, brain. They're very limited doctors. Doctors of medicine are not medical doctors. So what the hell was he doing there anyway? Anyway, I'll round off there, but we can all see that it stinks to high heaven that all this deletion was done because he doesn't want to spend the rest of his miserable life in an eight by six, sharing it with a big fat man called Bubba who wants him to be mama. Coming up. Are you angry about this? Because you should be angry about this. These people are admitting to the destruction of evidence. In plain sight, in full view, knowing at the time they should have kept that evidence. And then they're laughing about it and treating the people with contempt. As this goes on, I think we're more and more likely to get to the point where there will be an insurrection. And these, these people will be Ceausescu'd. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me at all. It just wouldn't bother me at all. I'm actually imaging it in my mind. And to see these people do, you know, suffer that fate would be right and proper. What they've done is disgusting, is awful. And now they're just, they, we basically need a Nuremberg and a Pierpoint. And that is going to put an end to it. But it isn't likely to happen. These people are going to laugh in your face and they're going to walk away and you're going to do nothing about it. And it's sad. Anyway, I shall stop there. Thank you very much for watching. Do please hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, leave a like, leave a comment, please share the video. And let's hopefully one day see them all rot from a gibbet. Bye.